Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Here's some of our inspiration for today. I just came in and I've collected all of these beautiful leaves from the garden. And uh, there are a couple of interesting things here. So these beautiful leaves are from the smoke bush. And you can see that, that it's starting to change. So there's, a, there's kind of a progression that looks something like that. You can see they're a little bit damp. We've got a rainy day here today. And then I've got my beautiful hydrangea flowers, which are persisting. And uh, some of them are on their way out, but uh, there are a few newer ones that, um, that haven't quite turned yet. I have a leaf from my geranium plant because I thought it was so pretty. I still have a few Rebecca's left. This big leaf is from my oak, um, yeah, oak leaf hydrangea. Isn't that gorgeous? Great big leaf. Now this beautiful yellow is from the witch hazel. And I was very excited to go out there and see that it's blooming. Okay, so there are the witch hazel flowers. This is the native species. And I also couldn't resist these leaves. And these are from my scented geranium. So this geranium, when you, when you crush the leaves, it gives off a rose scent. And it's just, it's been growing in a pot on the front steps and it's just a humongous. So I, I have to figure out how I'm going to cut that back, dry the leaves and, and bring it in for the winter and see if I can overwinter it. So I thought that was a pretty nice assortment of color. And these are some of the colors that I'm going to be using in the palette today. Now, um, what I'd like to do is to do a kind of an abstract impression of, uh, of something like this and then use it as a background for a card. So to get started, I'm just going to move some of these things off to the side. So we, we also have a very frisky kitten here today so don't be surprised if uh, if you see something running across the screen just checking my settings and that looks good okay and I see Della good morning Della and ginger hi ginger Linda okay so let's let's clear a little space here so pretty these are these these are some of my my most favorite colors I love the all the autumn hues and I actually I can show you let me just give you a quick peek see how I can do this this is the view out my front door so if I stand on the top step of my porch this is the view I see and I just feel so inspired by that color palette. I just love it. Okay, I'm just pulling my, getting my screen back on here so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right.
I'm just kind of loosely arranging these leaves and flowers in front of me so I can get a, a view of them as I, as I paint. But close enough to see them, but not so close that I can't paint. So there's, there's not going to be a lot of real estate here on my desk. But when the, um, after I do the video, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of what I'm looking at. So if any of you out there would like to follow along at your leisure, you'll be able to do that. Okay, I think that is enough fussing with the leaves for now. I have my watercolors. I've got yellow, red, and blue. And I'm going to see if I can find my spritzer. Here it is. I'm just going to give those a little spritz, get them wet. And I also have a piece of watercolor paper here. I've got my, my big brush. And um, I'm going to grab, let me just grab a little piece of plexiglass. All right, I'm just uh, moistening my paper off camera by lightly spritzing it. And I'm going to begin by just mixing up some of my yellow and my red and I'm just going to put some strokes on the paper. A little more red. So I'm just very kind of loose. It, it helps if you squint. So I'm just sort of squinting my eyes down. So I'm not looking at any of the um, any of the details. I'm just kind of getting a impression, a color impression. And I'm going to also add some blue, kind of push that around. And I'm going to reserve an area for a sentiment. So this, this paper is a little bit oversized for a card, so I know I'm going to have to tear it down a little bit when I'm done. And um, and it's it will not be dry enough in during the video to do that. But you you can come back and see the thumbnail of the of the finished product once I get the um, the paper is dry and I am able to tear it down and and mount it on a card front. But I just want you to see a little bit of the process here. So if you'd like to do something like this, you'd be able to do that as well. And um, I want to make sure I get this beautiful pinkish tone in my hydrangea. Just kind of pulling that around. Now there's a couple of things that you can do to help control the, the paint. So for instance, I have a tissue, and 
and I can just use that to blot up excess moisture and excess color here and there where I want to have a kind of a, a lighter colored leaf or, or effect. So I'm keeping my tissue, you can use a paper towel, I'm keeping that in my one hand while I have my brush in the other. And then I'm just going to go around and increase my color where I want it. So more paint, less water. And I'm going right to the edges of the paper. So I've got plenty of area to select from when it when it's time to figure out which section I, I want to use. Get this bright witch hazel leaf. And I also want to get a couple of these Rebecca. So I'm just going to do a quick little painting of the petals and I can zoom you in. I think it might you might want to see a little bit of a close up of this. Whoa, my zoom has a mind of its own. Hold on a second. That that was definitely a close up. This must be a new feature that I haven't learned to use yet. There we go. That's pretty good. So there are my Rebecca's, and I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, the blue and the red, just a dot, to indicate the centers. And let's see if I can just add a little bit of texture here. This is my this is my hydrangea flower. So I just want to kind of indicate what that there we go. This little this beautiful little flowerettes or florets. There we go. All right, now there are some areas that I want to get even darker. I'm going to, for instance, up here, my oak leaf, hydrangea could use a little more color. Some of these leaves. And then over here on my smoke bush, I'm going to add a little more of my, my blue. The other thing I want to do is uh, when, the, when the paint or the paper dries enough, I want to add some spattering. for added, added texture. And I think that's going to add quite a bit to the overall effect. Now a little bit of green in here. Just a few touches.
and it's okay if these colors all flow together. That's what I'm looking for. I'll make sure that this bottom area has some color as well. And let me see if I can pull out some shape for my... This is for the... Um, Bring you out a little bit further so you can see what's happening here. There we go. There, do you see this? Do you see this badness? See what what happens when I when I try to paint? Yeah. Yeah, it's never easy. I want to see if I can reserve some spaces here for to indicate my witch hazel flowers, and um, and they're absolutely wonderful looking. They're just like these um, these little kind of spidery shapes. So it's a little the paper's a little bit too wet to be able to hold the the lines very well. They're they're very soft. So I'm going to have to give that a few minutes, but while it's still wet, I can just continue adding as much color as I'd like. And I still have a, a ways to go on some of these beautiful leaves, so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of those soft edges while I can. And just load up. Let's get a little more of the yellows down in this corner, and I think I'm going to call that done. Make sure I get these edges. All right, I think it's time to put this aside and let it dry a bit. And while that's drying, I'll get my card base ready. So I'm going to just move the paint out of the way. Okay, so for this, I'm going to get out my trimmer. Now, yesterday I did a, a very quick video to let you know about a wonderful deal that's going on right now with the starter kit and I just wanted to point out hold on a second I gotta grab a piece of paper I just wanted to point out that if you're just beginning or if you're thinking about beginning to do some paper crafting. There are a couple of essential tools that I would really recommend that you get. 
And the first one, of course, would be the trimmer. And uh, the trimmer looks like this. It scores and it cuts. And it has a, a little ridge up along the top here to ensure that you always have a perfectly right angle. So if I put my paper in here at the four and a quarter mark, move my cutting blade out of the way, and then just use my scoring blade. So you see there's two blades here. This is actually more like a, a little wheel. That's going to give me a really nice crisp, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, nice crisp, well I'll show you when I fold it. Let me just cut it first. Here at five and a half on the longer side of the paper, and I can get two perfectly straight pieces of cardstock. This is the thick, very vanilla. And if I just fold that, you'll see that I get a perfect fold right in the center. Now the next favorite tool is going to be the bone folder. And the bone folder is actually a piece of bone that's very smooth that you can use to make that fold in your paper. Okay, you can also use it for burnishing. So we're just going to be using one of these card bases today. So there it is. There is my five and a half by four and a quarter card base. And then I want to put a colored mat to um, help accent my artwork. So I'm just going through my cardstock here. I think what I want to use is Cajun Craze. I think this is a really pretty color to use that coordinates nicely with these leaves. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's do a double mat today. So... Let's see what I have for yellow. And then I also have I got some uh Soft suede here might be good. Um, all right, well, I don't see. I don't see what I'm looking for. So hang on. There it is. It's hiding. So this is a. Um, I think this is bumblebee. So I'm just going to grab a, a scrap of that. get out my trimmer and now what I'm going to do is I have to make a decision so the decision is do I want which color do I want on the outside and I think I'm gonna put the yellow on the on the outer edge so I'm gonna cut that just slightly smaller than my card size so I'm gonna cut this at five and three eighths. And four and one eighth. You can check that. That looks good. And the Cajun Craze. You can also get the uh, cardstock in, in packs of assortments. So um, if you'd like to, uh, these, these colors I believe come from the Regals. Well this, the, the Bumblebee is an in color. Uh, I'll talk to you about that in a different video, but the, we have different color groups of um, to coordinate. So 
you'll hear me sometimes talk about the subtles, the regals, the neutrals, the brights, and um, and by keeping the, the colors in these different families, it helps you to coordinate your projects when you're using the, uh, the DSPs, which is the designer series papers, the ribbons and inks and embellishments all coordinate beautifully. So here we have, so there's my base. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down so that you can see how that looks. And I'm using the multi-purpose liquid glue. And it comes in this wonderful little bottle that's just the right size. And it has this wonderful kind of a pointy nozzle so that you can really control the, um, the placement of the glue. Now I'm just going to line these up so I get that beautiful little sixteenth of an inch reveal. So just a little extra accent and I can go ahead and give that a good burnish with my bone folder. That's going to help to distribute the glue, make sure that everything's nice and flat and that I have good adhesion. So that's my mat. And since the watercolor is still wet, I'm just going to go ahead and mount this ahead of time. And you would use the same technique if you were making a little tent place card, just you know, a little bit smaller, maybe half the size of the, of the card, or you could trim it down to whatever size it is that you'd like. You would also you could also use it to make a little envelope or a gift card. But there's my card base with my beautiful double mat and I can see that my painting is still sopping wet so while that continues to dry I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find a sentiment I'm going to use this one. This is called Go To Greetings, one of my favorites. And I'm going to use the Cajun Craze ink that matches the paper perfectly. And I'm going to grab a scrap. So I've got, let's see, I don't have a little scrap here. Let me just, this is, again, I'm going to the very vanilla. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut a little sliver off the edge for my sentiment. So I'm going to, I'll cut this, I think, one and a half. Maybe that's a bit much. Let's make it one and a quarter. And I love this just a note, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pull that one out. Oh, got one ready to go, but wrong color ink, so let's grab my stamp.
and be straighter. It's not very straight either. There we go. All right, so I'm going to pull my painting back in, but it's still plenty wet. But what I can do is I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel because it is very wet. And I'm just going to put that on the corner here just so that you can get a, an idea of how this will look when it's, when it's done. So there it is. And then my sentiment. Okay, so that's the video for today. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And when you come back after I get all the links and everything in the description, you'll be able to come back and see the, the finished note card. And, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little more spattering and some uh, detail to some of the flowers and the stems and that sort of thing. There is, there's the picture, and here's some of the inspiration. So I, I hope that gives you some ideas on how you might be able to go out and capture a beautiful impression of what's what's happening out in the in the autumn land landscape. There we go. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We are going to be right back here on Saturday for Paper Crafting Saturday and also for the seventh week in the 12 weeks of Christmas. So I hope you'll come back and join me for that. Um, the if you're not in the class already, you have to register. It's absolutely free. But, um, but once, you, once you sign up, I'll be able to give you an invitation. You'll be able to enter the online classroom where you can see all of the videos for the projects that I've been making. And this is going to go right through until December 10th. So we've got plenty of time to do lots more crafting. So stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.